Welcome to another postcard analysis from the Vickers MG Collection and Research Association. So this is a look back at week eight and do, as we chat about some of the postcards that we saw last week, just picking up on what people perhaps shared on social media. A uh, quick reminder to make sure you've got the 16th of July, Saturday 16th of July, in your diaries to come and visit us at the National Army Museum, where we'll be displaying lots of machine gun core related material and Vickers machine gun items all the way uh, through the Second World War and up to today. Um, obviously general purpose machine gun, not Vickers machine guns in service today but uh yeah please come and join us there and uh help commemorate the 100th anniversary of the disbandment of the machine gun corps so uh this chat was possibly sort of pinged as being real naval division rather than motor machine gun corps but uh, a closer look at the cat badge does you know say it's mmg and you know the reverse supported that as well this one has been identified as number six battery, so it's quite a popular postcard. A lot of people have it in their collections, and it's part of a series. It's on the Imperial War Museum website as well, which pretty much confirms it's the sixth motor machine gun battery. Remember, we couldn't quite tell what it was saying on this sign, um, uh, but yeah, it's it, it's number six uh, or at sixth. So that was a nice bit of information to add. Um, or maybe it was this guy that was uh, possibly Royal Naval Division, but clearly yeah, we can zoom in and see that's motor machine guns there. Um, the cap badges are largely the same though. So, uh, well, not in this case. This case has got the earlier foresight as we noticed, um, but they do just have the letters underneath. Uh, unidentified chap though, so if you can identify uh, this person in any more detail, please do continue to, to share and let us know. Um, nothing much said about this one uh, or this one other than the fact that he was very smartly dressed. Um, nothing I don't think came out of this one other than a, a sort of a, a remark about how these do look like almost you know field expedient or workshop made items you know that are the uh, gas covers or rain covers for the belt boxes rather than um, anything uh, formal but I would say that I've never I haven't found any diagrams information or anything about how to make them in the field so um, whereas we have for many other things uh, that are like that um, yeah, and then just this smart chap at the end as well. So uh, let's look at this week's. So a nice photo in front of their hut. Um, it just intrigues me that you can see the electric lamp outside the hut over here, uh, which is quite nice to see. And, and, and there seems to be a pole. So I don't know if that's a telegraph pole or uh, yeah, maybe, the, maybe it's electricity wire actually coming down. So an, an overhead electricity supply. Um, coming down into the electric lights but that's an interesting spot also as I can see there's just somebody photobombing the photo in the background as well which is quite good um, now this shows to uh, you know, Vickers machine guns and we could immediately assume that these were a machine gun section of the machine gun core but if you look at the shoulder titles they're curved so we've got like a county regiment a, a, a county regiment shoulder title here um, I can't identify what it is uh, and I can't really see whether there's any too many of them um, but given the proximity and the there's no metal ribbons either so it's not going to be post-war it's likely to be um, pre 1915 these, the, these chaps are going to be transferring into the machine gun core I would have thought um, and they haven't got their insignia yet so the guns are quite early they're single arch so it does date them to about 1916 rather than any earlier than that um, and we've got mark one muzzle attachments we've got a few drill rounds in the empty ammunition belt, belt and we've got number three um, belt boxes with a mark one tangent site there it's nice to see the gun side on without the individual sat behind them that we've seen in quite a few because what it means is we can see this we can see the leather strap wrapped around here that is that holds the tripods together and we can just see the um brass plate that's on that rear tripod leg so that will be a data plate it will include the serial number of the gun as well so the serial number will be stamped on that brass plate and it will also be stamped into this top line here and into the right hand side of the um, main cross head uh, in the, the main body of the tripod as well so that's quite nice now you can see that we've got some um crisscrossing that I've since learned that uh, may actually indicate something so we've got if we've got two crosses there uh, maybe a third up the top uh, that might 
as, as it seems at different units we're using these crossed putties to identify different roles or different uh within anything that one seems to be a few different there so maybe we're not seeing um yeah we've got two crosses there two chevrons perhaps put into it uh, both guns don't have any direction dial and they don't have the um elevating wheel cover either but this one uh yeah so sorry no so they don't have that uh there's no other insignia we've got sergeant stripes on this chap um that looked a bit i don't know do they look different maybe i'm just being paranoid but they look to be a little bit different um there maybe i'm just trying to find things but that's the only rank i think that i can see in the in the whole photo as well so yeah so, so it's interesting the fact that it's a county regiment uh before their transfer into the machine gun corps Nothing appears on the reverse, though, sadly, other than that Wellingborough, um, which is Northamptonshire. So, uh, yeah, maybe a Grantham photo by the looks of it. Now, this pic shows um, a bit more detail. I think it's probably taken in France or Germany, perhaps. Uh, we've got a the wire removed from the crown of the cap there. So it makes it softer looking, which is always nice to see, but informal. You know, sign of some combat experience perhaps and you can see the MGC shoulder title you can also see this checkerboard below um, I don't know if I can yeah so it's that sort of design yeah proper squares not what I'm doing um, yeah there would have been an easier way of drawing this wouldn't there <laughs> um, so you see the checkerboard design that's that's uh, you know, we'll turn it black white black white squares and um, that is the insignia of the 34th battalion so machine gun corps so we're able to identify you know, the unit of that so that's 34th battalion now he's wearing his 1914 pattern belt uh, with the 1907 uh, pattern bayonet for a short magazine Lee Enfield rifle so you know it's it will, the um, watermarks come through quite heavy on that piece there so it's obviously quite a dark photo we can't really tell much about the putties uh, but he clearly is wearing them and it's that standard sort of studio photo and it's been identified on the back as 34th battalion mgc and it's got some writing with love and best wishes yours will no other information so we can't really track down you know there's going to be lots of williams bills wills in the 34th battalion so uh, i think our, our, our detective work stops there so this photo is brilliant because it actually names the section number two section a company sixth battalion of the machine gun corps so that's in sixth division uh you know the a company and it would have been formed for, uh maybe february march 1918 so it dates the photo you know, after that period as well it looks to be that they're um taking somewhere dilapidated building bit of damage on the roof there but not like a knocked out building or anything maybe there's some damage to the chimney top as well so not not particularly sort of a battle area but you know behind the lines rested out of the lines um or in a relatively safe place we've got the two officers in the middle here um with their sam brown equipment and their their hats and then we've got uh, a range of other ranks sergeant we've got um we've got corporal or lance corporal in there and a corporal over on this side as well uh we've got the whole section together they're all wearing um actually is it quite interesting yeah uh no okay so i thought so we've got this corporal over here wearing an 08 pattern belt this corporal over here wearing a 14 pattern belt and we've got the sergeant with 08 we've got mainly 14 pattern equipment though uh throughout although there's another 08 sneaking through there so a reasonable mix um and sort of pushing against the fallacy that the 14 pattern equipment wasn't used in france uh you know particularly this late on in the war we know from the machine gunner's pocket book that 14 pattern equipment still listed for machine gun units uh you know, quite heavily so um they're all wearing their service dress as expected can't see any bayonets so it looks like it's just belt order then we've got the um zoom in on here we've got the uh, i can't really actually can i see, there's no sadly the detail on this doesn't show whether we've got any um medals or any gallantry awards uh, in it um the 
MGC shoulder title there and obviously the MGC cap badges. The guns themselves are a little bit interesting. Um, you know, you'll all know Mark 1 muzzle comb, but it looks like they've got the Mark 2 tangent side slide rather than the Mark 1 with the big thick finger piece turn, turning knob um, on the Mark 1. This looks to be the smaller uh, smaller piece on the Mark 2s. This gun's also lightened. You can just see the ribs on the breech casing there. Uh, and it looks weirdly, it looks like double arch top cover, which didn't exist. Um, certainly not to my knowledge. So it's probably a sing a five arch top cover with some dark pieces behind some of those arches, maybe from the chap that sat behind it. Uh, but Mark 1 direction dial, Mark 1 elevating wheel, um, ammunition in the belt, which is what we've come accustomed to in France or you know, on the continent with the BEF, uh, rather than in training when the belts are empty. And then a Mark 8, uh, a number 8 or number six ammunition belt box with the half lift folded back the other gun that we've got here is much the same i think so again doesn't look like it's a mark one tangent sight slide um and mark but it is a mark one armored cone mark one direction dial and elevating wheel and you can see the ammunition in the belt in the background so um yeah so quite a nice mix of uh, of equipment there uh, and some good detail of just the, these group photos are brilliant aren't they they really are nice it would just be so lovely to have some names to some faces one day but you know likelihood is pretty much zero nothing to report on the back other than it's in french so yeah absolutely uh, french speaking belgium or um or france so great studio shot, obviously not in a studio though, but they felt like getting the plant pot holder out or whatever if that is um, anyway. Uh, and um, yeah, if we look at the, I, I don't know, I, I, another photo that I particularly like, I think. Uh, so it looks like we've got a um, cross and crown. So this is a sort of felt cross like this. So we could check. Um, the Gibbs book by the Military Historical Society at some point. Um, and then we've got a different colour in here. I don't, I think I checked actually, and I don't think I could flag this up. But um, if anybody else has got a copy, then have a look. And I will have another look this week because it will give us the unit. It will give us the actual, uh, the actual battalion or company that this is part of. Different colours um, denote often, it's often same patterns denote the division or, and then the different colours. Um, in the center or the different color crosses would denote the brigade machine gun company um, and then go on to denote the different companies within the battalion so uh, you know the the cap looks really quite crushed but it's still got its wire in there I think um, or it's just folded well then service dress it looks a little bit too big for him sergeant um, or you know it certainly shows you how it bellows out the bottom there you know, it, it's really interesting top pocket's got quite a lot of material in uh, and then we've got his uh, trousers and his putties done um, but tied down at the bottom so probably a mounted chap um, sergeants did have horses we know that so um, sometimes they were uh, you know, in addition to the officers horses but otherwise the machine gun sergeant was a mounted role at, in in some units so um, yeah mounted and uh, but no spurs so um, uh, you know, we've seen spurs on cavalry I don't think we've seen them on mounted infantry uh, but yeah so that's quite a nice photo isn't it so we've got a bit of information on the back here 54838 sergeant H Robinson the MGC and we've got uh, information from the database, Sergeant Henry John Robinson, and he was an old contemptible. So he'd actually gone across to France on the 6th of November, 1914, and transferred to the Machine Gun Corps on the 6th of September, 1916. We don't know which unit in, um, and it seems we don't know which unit from either. Uh, I'm sure somebody out, out, out there might be able to work that one out for us. Uh, he was discharged on the 4th of March 1918, so this is six months before his discharge, this photo. And his address on discharge was 87 Stebbington Street, St Pancras. So nice bit of information, nice address at the end there. Um, always good to put some more information to these. Now this is an interesting photo, as I start many photos, in that it's uh, Norwood shipley yorkshire norwood avenue so, so it's a yorkshire photographer um and i don't think it's one i've seen before so it's not so it could be clipston grantham yeah, belton all those sorts of locations because it's machine gun corps but it's just 
not one of the um, local photographers. Uh, and it's a different style to what we've seen, you know, having the two guns sat up like this rather than um, people sat behind them. So again, sort of different, different photographer, different takes on it. Belt boxes are both closed. And number three, uh, Mark II belt boxes. They're both closed. If you look at the edge of this belt box here, you'll see there's a rib that runs down it. That's because um, that design takes it from the Mark III field carriage when it was used with the Maxim. That rib uh, it sort of basically it slides into two guides alongside on the carriage so that they don't bounce out when um, when it's riding along. So um, you yeah, know the guns are pretty standard as we've seen, and we've got the. Uh, the, 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 the loop, the auxiliary tripod leather loop at the back, but we're not fitted with a direction dial. Oh, yes, we are. Sorry. Uh, is it? I don't know. Can you just see direction dial? I don't think there is. So no direction dial there um, or elevating wheel cover. But we've got the nice number seven on the front of the tripod there to help us identify that. Um, and on the other gun, we have got an elevating wheel cover, but no direction dial there, which is a bit strange. Um, same belt box being used though, uh, Mark 1 tangent sight slide and um, uh, yeah on both of them. So let's have a look at Mark 1 muzzle cones on both. So um, we've got, let's look at this chap here, if you can see that is a slip on shoulder title. So that is MGCI in white on a khaki drill shoulder title. Or a khaki shoulder title, so that's quite interesting. They're quite rare. Um, they, yeah, we, as you can see in these photos, we haven't seen many of them, um, but it looks like they're certainly using them um, a little bit more in this photo. Uh, yeah, so there's a few present. Is there any brass shoulder titles? There's no shoulder titles on that one there. Um, he, well, yeah, I think I can't see any brass shoulder titles. It seems to be they're using them in preference or in, in the absence of brass, uh, which is quite interesting. Um, so we've got corporal, we've got some sort of stiff caps, uh, the wire is still in the crown of the caps on some of these. Um, we've got no belts. Uh, so I, yeah, so that's quite interesting. And what have we got down here? Is that marksman or a pioneer badge? Marksman badge cross rifles uh, on this chap down at the front sat there. Um, other than that, we've got a good conduct stripe. We've got some overseas stripes, three overseas stripes there. Uh, so that's uh, that's good to see. We've got a wound stripe. So this sort of putting it into some of these have seen action already and have come back to um, back to possibly the UK. So I think this is UK, uh, but back to back to the UK for for training. So uh, yeah, some interesting stuff on this one actually, insignia wise. Uh, always good to, to, to look at something a bit different. So there's nothing on the back here though sadly to uh, to help other than the fact that it's written in English so we can assume it's a UK location. Here we have a private of the machine gun corps but with a uh, good conduct stripe there and a wound stripe so somebody that's clearly seen some action uh, and um, and some good service as well so machine gun core shoulder titles machine gun core cap badge service dress 1914 pattern uh, belt there with his bayonet in place as well um, 1907 pattern bayonet it looks to be holding some papers or something on the table that is being set up in the studio for him yeah putties and boots as expected so nothing really outstanding but quite a nice example there of you know, a, um, a soldier in the, I would say the latter part of the war and frustratingly a blank reverse on the postcard again now this isn't a machine gun court postcard um, but I've included it it was part of you know, Graham's collection in there um, I've included it because obviously you know MGC 100 is about commemorating the disbandment of the machine gun corps but also the legacy that they left in terms of machine gunnery uh, the lessons that they'd learned during the great war and how those were transferred into every infantry battalion of the british army with their machine guns this seems to be a middle east or an india um, i'm going to say india uh, machine gun unit or a, sorry a british um, battalion serving in india uh, we have the uh, tropical helmets which you can see we have the subaltern in charge of the machine gun section there and his sergeant next to him. And his sergeant has the machine gun skill at arms badge above his uh, rank there, but also on his sleeve, which is a bit weird and a bit um, 
I think quite unique. Uh, he's wearing his sash there. Uh, I yeah, I've never seen that before actually to be worn, yeah, you know, on his sleeve, above the rank and um, on his forearm. So yeah, that's that's quite interesting. Uh, we've got you know, various ranks, good conduct stripes there, two of them on this Lance Corporal. We've got a you know, Corporal there. We've, um, you can see you know, what, you know, quite a bit. I can't work out which unit it is from just seeing the collar badges, and I can't see any um, cap badge in the detail that I need to try and work out who that is. Um, but we have another... Uh, this Lance Corporal, or we can just see the shoulder title there, which is quite a long name, so I don't know. It, it let's just put it this way it's not Gloucester, that looks shorter, it's not Essex, it's not you know, uh, yeah, it, it can't really work out. Probably would be able to from the rough shape of the collar badge and the length of the type name title, so maybe a bit more work to go into that one. Um, but what's quite nice is you can see uh, a couple of Skillet Arms badges on the uh, number one sat behind the gun there. And you can see the same on the individual sat behind the range taker. And that's assuming that that is a range taker and the MG skill at arms badge as well, because you know, they were qualified machine gunners before they were range takers. And he's got the number, bar and stride number 12, Mark three or Mark four maybe, um, but certainly nothing later than that. Uh, and what we can see on the guns is we've got the Mark II muzzle cone, we've got the later um, condensing hose, and then we've got this. So this is the condenser can for use in India. Um, it, it is, it's exactly the same code, but rather than being a two gallon fuel can, it's made in the shape of ammunition box so that it can be carried in the ammunition racks of the pack saddlery that they were moved on. We don't have one of those in the collections. We'd very much like one of those in the collection. Uh, what you can also see is the barrel casing cover is made out of leather. Um, Mark II gun again. So this is you know, the 1920s, late 1920s, maybe early 1930s. Uh, but it's a nice section uh, photo. And we've got 1903 pattern belts being worn I think uh, as well but what's in the background here is this now this to you, you just looks like something but it's actually um, a special target for uh, machine gun drill so it's you you would use the the dots at a certain range um, I can't remember what range it is that's in the small arms training manuals and you will line up the sights on the dots and that is the width of the tapping so if you see a soldier hitting the side of the uh, cross piece you know when they're not far of the cross piece here when they're not firing they're doing a tap and those are regulated intervals and you know it's so by tapping they are spreading the fall of shot uh, and so it's quite interesting to see that actually in the background of this photo so there's nothing to tell us which actual unit it is um, but it is in English and French so let's say Middle East or uh, India I think India uh, from the presence of those belt boxes but it could be a battalion that has come from India into the Middle East um, I do hope you're enjoying these postcard you know, analysis videos I know they can be a bit samey now and again uh, but they, you know, that they're hopefully a lasting record of of these postcards and the analysis that we've done of them. Please do continue to support us on Patreon on www.patreon.com forward slash vickersmg, and uh, make sure you've got that date, the 16th of July, in your diaries. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like and share the video and subscribe to the channel. Please support us on Patreon if you're able to and let us know of anything you'd like to see in the future. I look forward to hearing from you.